When I go to the DIY center, I always buy one or two cheap clamps. So now I have a lot of these clamps. I think that they are so cheap because after using them a couple of times, this piece here always deforms and sometimes it falls. These clamps used to have this piece hooked in that ball on the screw and the top surface was flat. To leave a mark in the wood, one should tighten it very hard. But now that piece is a metallic sheet with a plastic cover that always ends up breaking or sometimes the top of the screw perforates the plastic cover. We usually lose that plastic cover and that metallic piece always deforms due to the pressure and then it can fall. The worst problem is that when we tighten it, it is very easy to make that horrible circular mark with a puncture right in the middle. So we must use a couple of wooden blocks between the clamp and the workpiece to protect it. In this video I will put a piece of plywood in front of each jaw. So I don't need to look for a lot of wooden blocks when I need to use these clamps. I will use 1 cm thick plywood. First I cut a 10 cm wide strip of plywood. Now in my table saw sled I make a mark 3 cm from the slot. And I cut my plywood strip in 10 cm by 3 cm pieces. I cut all the pieces I can, until I have a piece that I think it can be dangerous to cut like that. I need a couple of these pieces for each of my chip clamps. Now I have 19 of these pieces, so I will cut another one, but this time I will use my hand saw. And now I have enough pieces to improve 10 of my chip clamps. I mark a line right in the middle in one end of one of the pieces. I turn that strip until I can put the tip of this drill bit right on the line. I turn the piece and if I can put the tip of the drill bit right on the line, then it is perfectly centered. Now I can clamp the other end of the strip. Now I try to center the clamp jaw on the plywood piece. I want the right side of the drill bit to be slightly to the right of the metallic guide of the clamp. And I mark the position of the plywood piece. I move both the clamp and the piece of plywood to the right, until the drill bit is just slightly to the left of the clamp guide. Now I put the piece in the first mark, and I drill it. I move the piece to the other mark, and I drill it. And I drill another hole in the middle. And I do the same with all 20 plywood pieces. With this narrow chisel, I cut the wood I have left between the holes. First I cut from one face of the piece, and then from the other face. And now I use the drill press to clean the hole, moving the plywood piece from side to side, with the drill bit turning inside the hole. The truth is that to move the plywood piece like that, I need to make some effort with the hand and with the fingers. But anyway, I only have 20 plywood pieces. I 
I use the dig sander to sand the edges of the pieces, being careful when the pieces touch the part of the disc moving up, because it can throw the piece towards my face. It is advisable to use safety goggles. And I round the corners. Finally, I use a sanding block to clean any wood board I have left. Now I just have to put the moving jaws apart, so I can mount the plywood pieces in the metallic guide between both jaws. To put the moving jaws apart, I have to grind the notch these clamps have in the end of the metallic guide. Some clamps don't have a notch, but they have a rivet. I should remember that when I grind the metal, it can get very hot. Finally, I can put two of these plywood pieces between the jaws of each clamp. I put the moving jaw apart. I mount two plywood pieces in the metallic guide and I put the moving jaw in place. Now I don't have to lose my time looking for wooden blocks when I need to use these clamps. These plywood pieces are very handy to use and they are not only to avoid the marks in the wood, they are also very helpful to make sure that the clamping force is parallel to the metallic guide. A big problem with these cheap clamps is that the thread in the moving jaws can be misaligned and that makes very difficult to apply the clamping force in the right direction. Now all the problem is to use some newspaper to make sure I won't glue the plywood pieces to my workpiece. Or maybe some wax could do the trick. Thanks for watching. You can find all my woodworking videos in my YouTube channel. And if you like my videos, thanks for subscribing to my channel.